Hello everyone and welcome to Cineval Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video we're going to be talking start collecting Warhammer Age of Sigma and today we're looking at the Flesh Eater Courts and in particular the Hollow Morn sub-faction. Now in this video we're going to go through the sub-faction special rule before looking at a couple of units we recommend to get started with for this particular sub-faction. After that we'll look at some other units we can use to expand upon those first couple of initial purchases and then finally finish off the video with a little sample army list of a thousand points for you to use hopefully as some inspiration for studying your own force of the Felicia Court using the Halomorn sub-faction. And so to begin with, we have the Halomorn sub-faction rule, and this is called Grizzly Cavaliers. This allows us to add one to the damage characteristic of melee weapons used by friendly Halomorn Knights units that have made a charge move in the same turn. This ability has no effect on any mounts the models may have, however. Knights in a Flesh of the Quartz army consist of predominantly three units, which are your Crypt Horrors, Crypt Flayers, and the brand new Morbeg Knights as well, though it wouldn't affect their mounts as the rule states here. Something on top as well of this as well is the ability that Crypt Horrors will become a battle line unit in your force. This allows you to take a predominantly large beast size creature force for your Flesh of the Quartz if you're wanting to do just that. Today's video is brought to you by Gap Games, a fantastic retailer in Australia for a variety of different miniature war games. If you'd like to help support the channel, we have an affiliate link where by clicking on and purchasing, you'll help support the channel, but you'll also help support Gap Games, which is a fantastic servant to the community. And so, where to begin with for the Flesh of Courts? For me, I think a character that really suits almost any Flesh of Courts army it's put into is the Abhorrent Arch Regent. This is a fantastic character, first of all, with 7 wounds, 4 plus save, you've got 5 attacks, 3s threes and 3s, threes, run 1 damage 2 in combat as well, so pretty solid for a character. It's a 2 cast and 2 unbind wizard with the ability to attempt to, you know, stop some endless spells in there as well. Royal Blood will mean it's got the healing, which most of your Flesh of the Courts heroes will find they have. The Countless Servants rule as well is going to allow at the start of the hero phase to either return th three models to any friendly surf new unit nearby or pick a knight unit and return a model to that, which is particularly good. You know, a knight back is at least three wounds worth of models, so just as many, if not four, if not more that way, which is really cool. You've also got a really interesting spell called Carry and Cool, which allows you to, at the end of your turn, or end of your movement phase rather, if you have any Flesh and Quartz units that were set up during that turn, you can immediately make the move of D6, meaning you're going to get much more likely to make the charges for your force. Now, of course, if we're looking at building this force, the unit we're going to look at to start with is, of course, going to be our Crypt Horrors. These become battle line in this particular sub-faction, which is really nice. They've got four wounds each and a five plus save. Four attacks each with a two-inch range at fours and threes, no run damage. Two is okay to begin with but the big thing comes when you've got all their other abilities working for them chosen the king means you improve the ren characteristic of their weapons by one if they're within nine inch of any friendly courtiers or 18 inch of any abhorrence of which the abhorrent arch region is they heal each turn as well and warrior elite means any unmodified wound roll for an attack made with their club that happens to be a six has a damage characteristic of three rather than two which is really cool so they can punch out quite a bit of damage if you can get you know a decent amount of sixes in there get some rend on them they can really be quite a solid punchy force now looking at where to go next after that the other base knight we have are the crypt flayers these can be quite an interesting unit to bring to the table first of all they're going to bring some ranged attacks with their death screen which is four attacks at fours and threes rent two damage one and these death screens will also get plus one to wound if they're targeting something with bravery six or less the big thing here, though, is their escort courtiers rule, where they can pick a flesh of courts hero that has seven wounds or less up, and eventually fly that model around with them. This will allow them to set the hero back up, which will mean the hero does get that extra move, if you so won't. Now, the last type of knight we have access to are Morbeg Knights. These are the brand new Flesh Eater Courts and Cavalry we have access to, which are awesome. Their big thing is they're going to do mortal wounds on the charge. Now, they obviously have the extra damage in there as well, meaning you're going to have a bunch of Rain 1 damage 2 attacks coming out. Five per model, in fact, and six on the unit's champion. 
You've got the option for a musician in there as well, which is going to allow you to add one to run on charge rolls. And you can also have the models count as extra models for controlling objectives as well, thanks to your standard bearer. Now, the Predator's Pounce mean you can retreat and still charge as well, which is really nice. And whenever they charge, they turn off Unleash Hell as well, thanks to the Shrieking Charge rule. Now, combining with them really nicely is the Abhorrent Gore Warden, another character model we can look to bring into our force. For me, the Gore Warden's big ability is going to be the Royal Hunting Party, where a Crit Flare or Morbeg Knight unit can eventually start off the table with this model. This is really cool because combine this with your Boring Arch Regent's ability to give you some extra movement when you come down means this unit can deploy and set up on the table, get some extra movement, and make sure they're getting in that charge. And this is especially cool with the Morbeg Knights who'll be deploying down and they'll get the plus one thanks to the musician in the unit. Now, lastly, we have the Crypt Haunted Courtier. I think he's probably the two of the courtiers I think is going to be nicer. You're probably going to see that you have the ability to take larger units of Crypt Haunters or your Crypt Horrors, which is going to be really nice, meaning you can take, you know, big blocks, nine of them, and his big ability really is after he fights, he's able to immediately pull in these big units of Crypt Horrors to fight alongside him. And so, here we have our sample arm list, obviously going for Hallowmorn and the Mortal Realm of Shaish, the Realm of Death. Now, we have the Grand Strategy, Expand the Kingdom here. This is essentially, we need to have our general in our opponent's territory at the end of the game, and their general not within their territory, aka probably dead. Now, we've got our Abhorrent Arch Regent, who's going to be our general, and Feverish Scholar will give the model plus one to cast, unbind, and dispel. And also, if they ever have six noble deed points, this will actually increase to a plus two modifier instead. The Grim Garland is a minus one bravery debuff in an aura around them, which is pretty cool. This can be combined, you know, with nicely with the fact that some of the other models will get bonuses if they ever are targeting someone with lowered bravery. Now, Lore of Madness, we've gone for Deranged Transformation, and we've actually chosen to take this on the Abhorrent Gore Warden as well. This is mostly for redundancy. I think both of these models have interesting spells in their own right, so it's really going to be which one of these two spells is more useful at the time, and then the other one will cast Deranged Transformation for the Force. Battle line wise, we have two units of Crypt Horrors, one unit reinforced to be six models strong. This could be a really, really punchy unit. And generally, you're going to want to make sure that both these units are always in range of those Abhorrents, which are 18 inch, so a pretty decent range, still allowing you to affect large swaths of the battlefield. A unit of Crypt Flayers and a unit of Morbeg Knights will round out our force at a perfect 1,000 points, and everything can be wrapped up in a battle regimen if you are using battalions in your games. Now, 71 wounds is pretty nice for the force, especially at 1,000. One drop, as mentioned, otherwise this force will be a 7 drop if you're not using battalions, uh, or a 6 drop if you do continue to take the Crypt Horrors in the unit of 6 as well. If you're playing in larger games and you're looking to expand upon this, probably getting some more Crypt Horrors into your force, maybe even taking that unit of 9 and taking something like the Crypt Haunted Courtier to allow them to pile in directly after, could be a really fun little combo to have. But if you've got some ideas on your own Hello Morn Force, let us know your thoughts down in the comments. And so, that's the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below letting us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our great little community here, we have a Discord server linked down in the video's description, and also linked down there are the best ways to help support the channel as well. Our Patreon and YouTube members down there are fantastic ways to help support the channel, and if you'd like to get a shout out like all these people, you can go and join up today. So, with that said, we'd like to give a shout out to all our Patreon and YouTube members. So, thank you to our Patreons Rob B, Broken Chef, Andy C, Grimskold, Colorblind Magic, Benjamin Swallows, James Cater, Mark Harvey, Domir, Average Wargamer, Q Dimac, Andrew Bowen, Outer and Shot First, Kenny Low, and Soren, and to our YouTube members Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Lock Loric, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, James Tillman, Disco, John Castle, and Gargamel196. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Stay well. And most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.